and welcome to today's webinar. I've got something really exciting to show you today. Microbit have launched a brand new website and it has a classroom functionality for teachers. I'm sure you're going to find it very useful, particularly if you're using Microbits in your classroom. Uh, my name is Meredith Ebbs. I work for the University of Adelaide in the CSER team and today's webinar will link into the uh, algorithms module in our online course. So the online course can be found at csermooks.adelaide.edu.au. So I'm just going to jump into the microbit site so that we can show you where to go. So here we are in the new microbit website. You can see it's still the same address but it's got a little bit of a different layout and a different feel. So we've got um, getting started. If you've never used microbits, you'll see you've got some videos. It talks about how to transfer the data to your microbit. And it even has instructions for the different operating systems, which is fantastic. If you click on projects, you'll find some design challenges, which were on the old website, but a little bit hidden. And you've also got your make code projects. Click on explore activities and you actually have got some of the familiar projects we had and scrolling down you will see there's actually some new projects. I love the way that they've graded the projects as beginner, intermediate or advanced and down the left hand side here we've got a functionality of to filter. So if I click on networks I can find some more intermediate projects which allow me to teach the year five, six content around how computers transmit data. You've also got some advanced concepts in here. It's a fantastic website, really and truly. It's got some really great content um, and really great functionality. If you then go across to lessons, this gives you some lessons specifically targeting computer science skills and knowledge and lays it out in a really easy to understand way with a printable and uh, downloadable lesson plan for teachers. Finally you've got your Lex code. That menu was on the previous website but now we've got a different layout. We've got make code editor which is where you go for your blocks. Python editor is where you go for your text. Down here you've got a component for mobile tablets which is great because that actually is a learnt skill as well, a very a little bit tricky for kids in the beginning. We've also got a section on Scratch. So Scratch 3.0 had a microbit compatibility extension launched at the beginning of 2019, but it has been a little bit different, difficult to find information on that. So it's great that they've got that link in here now. I'm going to go back to the top. Across to the right hand corner we have a microbit classroom. In the microbit classroom we have an opportunity for teachers to share a screen or share data with students. I'm going to name my class, first class. I'm going to use the make code language. High school teachers might choose to use Python. Launch the classroom. Once I'm in my classroom, the first page is just the instructions on how to use it. This will show me where each of the components are, along with a little bit of information on how it works. The editor allows me to build some simple code. I'm just going to build the flushing heart just very quickly. Now I would like to allow my students build it for me on their computers and I'd like them to resubmit it. If you click on dashboard, this is the information my students need to join. I'm just going to swap browser windows and I'm going to type microbit.org join and I need purple dog bicycle stopwatch So what I have here is I've got two browser windows. I'm going to sign in in this window as the student so that I can swap between the screens so that you can actually see 
what the student sees. So this is currently the student window and the student process. I click on continue, type in my name, continue. Okay, so as a student, I can see my teacher's work on the board. I'm going to build what the teacher's just asked me to do, which is a flashing heart. And then I can click on I've finished and my teacher will receive my work back at their desktop. Note that when I click on I've finished, it will prompt me to evaluate my lesson, but I will be required to sign out. So if I want to do another lesson, I need to sign back in. So that's actually going to be a learning process for the students. So now I'm going to jump back to the teacher's screen. All right, so on my dashboard here, I can see that Mary has finished her work. I can click it and it will actually show what she has done for me, which is perfectly correct. Now I can also in here, once I've received all my submissions from my students, I can download the report as a Word document. If you're uh, uh, using Google Docs as your platform, uh, once you've downloaded the Word document to your hard drive, you can then upload it. It will go to your downloads folder. Uh, if you don't know where that is on your computer, click on the little arrow here and you say show in finder. On a Windows computer, that would say show in folder. And when I do that, it will take me to the location of that um, item there. And I would want to upload it from there to my Google Drive. So you can see here my teacher code and I can now compare it to Mary's code. If I had 20 students, of course, I'd have 20 pages of code or 20 instances of student code. If a student has submitted code and you want them to rejoin your class for another task, you do have to go into their student code and you have to click on their name. Now this is really tedious if you have a large class. You click on the pencil and you can either delete them, which of course would delete their code, but if you've downloaded the Word document, that's okay because you've already got the .code. The other option, you can slide that over to in progress. Uh, notice that if they edit their code after being reset to in progress, it will overwrite any finished work that they had in your files. So you need to have already downloaded your Word document. You can also in here edit their name if they've put a nickname and you need a full name or if they've put a silly name and you need to override it with their correct name. You click on apply changes. Then when the student goes to log in again, Notice that my name came up as the correct name because I changed it as a teacher. So by overriding that back in progress, I can then come back in here and I can edit the code. If you've ever taught with microbits, it can be very frustrating when you want them to do something but you need them to have a starting point. And sometimes it can take them half an hour to build the code that you need in order for them to uh, modify that code or do what you want them to do with it. What we want to do is we want the students to modify their code. And I'm going to just modify this slightly. If I want to send this data to a student, I click on share code with students. It will list all the students in the class that are currently signed in. 
I click on send code. Done. What do the students see? The students get a message, your teacher has sent you some code. I click on use code, it will overwrite the code that is inside my workspace. And notice new blocks appeared. And now by doing this, what I can do is say to the students, could you please modify my code? This will save a lot of time, it will save a lot of um, effort on the part of the teacher and the students because you can actually give a starting point to students that they can then proceed to work on. So my message might be, I want you to modify this code to have a longer pause time and I would like different elements, different um, lights to come on. So I'm going to use that one and then I'm going to use this one. I'm going to move this out. Okay, I also asked them to change the times. Then I click on I finished, sign out. Now the teacher goes to the dashboard. I can collapse that top part by um, using this slidey button. Meredith has finished. When I go in, there's her code. Now, if I have other students that I wanted to share this code with, I could click here and I could choose other students to share this code with to show them um, how to do something or to give them a head start on getting catching up. The last thing that you might like to know is you can save the classroom. So you click on Save Classroom, you download the file, by downloading the file, it creates a HTML file on your computer that when you want to restart this, this particular um, session, you open that HTML file by um, going to your downloads folder and it will bring you back to where you left off. If you've finished and you've downloaded your classroom, you can click on end session and it will end and delete the data from your screen. I hope you're as excited as me about this new functionality on the Microbit website and I'm really looking forward to seeing your comments down below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that you can get updates when I post. Thanks very much for joining me everyone and I'm really appreciated if you've actually watched this far. Thank you very much. Bye bye.